So welcome. <laughs> this is Karen Lindvall Borg, and we are with the National Association of Christian Women Entrepreneurs on our community and education webinar, which we hold every Tuesday at 2 p.m. I do this because I love to grow my business and I love to see other people grow their business too. I love the like-minded Christian community of Christian women entrepreneurs. I think we're a very connected, collaborative, very supportive group. Love that about NACWI. We're also doing a networking emphasis this year that we didn't do the year before and we did some of the other years before. And so the first Tuesday of every month, we will not have a, an in-depth educational emphasis. We will just network and share what we do and where you can find us. And the last time we did it, it was great fun. This month, we had people had questions for each other and uh, we got to make some really great connections. It was great. We also try to provide an educational emphasis almost every week of the month on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. I love that because there's, I don't know about you, but I feel like there's never an end to what we can learn or should be learning as we grow as entrepreneurs. And then we love to pay it forward. We have adopted a little girl named Vilma from um, Guatemala, and we went to Guatemala last year and worked with Christian women entrepreneurs. It was great fun. I don't speak Spanish. I could understand what people were talking about, but I couldn't really communicate without an interpreter. So we took an ACWI member with us, Kathy. Who, is, who speaks Spanish and actually grew up. They are great fun. We're trying to go again this year, so join us if you will. Uh, what's new is on the docket is our calendar. So if you go to NACWI.org, our website, there's a button at the top that says calendar. When you click on it, it should give you everything we're doing almost every day and, and link to push to get there. And last year, it was just so hard to keep up with how, how do we make sure the link is right in front of everyone all the time. So go visit our calendar. And then the other thing new is our free group. I think uh, when you go to our fan page, it directs you straight to the free group because you can be so much more front and center in a free group, in a group, a Facebook group than you can on a Facebook fan page. They've just become so restrictive. Here's some save the dates. I'm not sure we think this Guatemala trip is probably not gonna happen. Um, I'm still packed and ready to go if it does happen. Uh, March, we'll have a riding retreat here in uh, North Central Texas, East Texas. And then mark this date down, September 20th through 21st. I actually think you should write down 19th through 22nd so you have a free day beginning and a day after to sort of regroup. That'll be our NACWI conference here in the Dallas area, and it's all about chocolate. <laughs> well, you can't go wrong with chocolate, right? Another new thing that we're doing, we've always kind of offered We Wednesday opportunities to all of our NACWI paid members or comped members so that on a Wednesday they could pop in and teach something that they wanted to. Uh, people came and went, but it was sparse, and so this year we sort of lined up a team to teach, and Holly is in the room. She's teaching on self-care. Kim Hawkins had to go to a doctor's appointment with her husband uh, to some follow-up stuff. She's te teaching going from stuck to done. Kim Smith and Tina Parmigiano are gonna do Money Matters. They've sort of turned it into a whole Robin Hood kind of a thing, which is really cute. I'm gonna teach on marketing and monetizing because it's what I need the most right now. And then at Kim Stedman is our celebrations officer. So on Wednesdays, you'll be hearing from a bunch of new people. They'll, we've created classrooms. So if you happen to not be, have been able to catch it, but you want it, we'll give you the link to the classrooms in the NACWI membership group at least. And you can pop into the classroom and take advantage. At the end of the year, we'll have 12 self-care, 12 unstuck, 12 money, 12 marketing, 12 celebrations in there. So cute little classrooms. Let's stop there. Uh, of course, we want you to be part of our community. Christy, it's great to have you. Christy's from Florida. She's a brand new virtual assistant, really excited about, she's kind of hit the floor running. Uh, the mom of three young children, so it's great to have you here. We'll have you type in the chat room some things about you so we can keep up with you. And then I'm gonna stop share and pray us in and let, hey Kathy, let um, Cricket, 
roll. We've heard from Cricket before. Cricket, I'm so glad that you're here again. I brought her back. I try to have somebody new speaking every Tuesday of the year because I think it's great to hear from new people. But this is her this is her expert area of expertise as well as when she spoke to us on powerful presentations last summerish or fall and so I just I really wanted to bring her back so I broke one of my own rules to do that so let me pray us in and then let her just fly solo she knows what she's doing God bless you for doing this Father God we're just so grateful we're grateful for beautiful days for new starts for like People like Christy and all of us who feel like we're not starting new have new things on the hopper as well. We want to be entrepreneurs that are growing, that are connected to like-minded other Christian women entrepreneurs that are have networking opportunities, that have pay it forward and missions opportunities. And we just want to please you every step of the way in what we do. And so I would just pray a special blessing over this hour, over everyone who's here. Over those who might listen to the recordings later as well, Lord, and just pray that uh, the message is clear, that it's fun, that we walk away from here with something new and something to do, and that we do it, implement it. We've got to get we've got to get things rolling and get things done. Equip us to do that and to do that in a way that brings you glory and honor. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. All right, cricket, you are on. Thank you, Karen. Welcome. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, Karen, if we can figure out the, the screen share, that will help us get started. Okay, so if you hover your mouse over the bottom of the Zoom room, a yep. bar. Yep. A I've bar share. Yeah. Um, it's probably going to go, let's see. No, it's not pulling up mine yet. Let me see. I think you do you have to make me the host to share no I've usually I've set it up usually let me do that though I've usually set it up so that everyone who's in here could share a screen if they wanted to let me see let me see cricket more make host make co-host let's see would like to control zoom wants to control my computer sure why not sure take over sure how about it <laughs> Oh, don't know what this is doing. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's my own Zoom account trying to kick up. I'm just going to cl close all this out. Did I lose so you guys? I just, I just made you a co-host. Let's see if that helped. Okay, let's go back. Okay, so whatever we did, I lost the picture. So let's see if I can figure this out. Let's, let's hit the back button. That's always a good button. So now it's wanting me to rejoin okay <laughs> it didn't do this to us last time no but you know modern technology i'm not even gonna... <laughs> okay well i know my camera's on and i can click to you guys and i can click it what's funny is it opened up my own zoom let me see if i close that y'all still hear me i can can you hear us i can i just can't find you darling everybody's checking your head okay, so it's a different tab so yeah, tab. I don't have a different tab open. That's my challenge. Um, what about the view at the top tab. right? What if do you let need me, to click on the speaker? Let me, let me minimize that and see. And it's never done this to me before, so I apologize. Karen and I had no trouble Whatever, last time. Look in your bottom bar on the bottom, and you should see a little camera, a little blue camera. It yeah. won't be a tab that's got open. It. Got it, camera. got it, got it. Okay, now we're back. Thank you. Um, it was opening my own Zoom for some reason. It kept loading a whole nother thing. So let's see here. Okay, so now we want to, I should be able to share my screen, correct? Yeah, hoping. Okay, I think this is mine. Click the share button. There we go. Yeah, that's, that's us in, okay. So here's where we are. Here's where we are. Now, if I can, uh, Proof that you visit the NACWI web. Yep. Uh, yep, I did. Didn't I do good on that? Made you it look did. all like it was done, uh, done, done on purpose. So now let's see if we can. Okay, slideshow. My button's hid behind my light. Um, okay, so what we're talking about today, it's, um, we'll start over again. Happy New Year, everyone. Yes, uh, but before we get rolling, we still see, or I still see, 
the NACWI Facebook page. You so. do not see the Mastering Your Message that's big up on my screen. No, so maybe close your... Okay. Close, but minimize your... You, your interesting, because we had no trouble with this last time. Yep. Let me... Um, let me, let me do this. So on my end, it shows the screen showing. So let me see what I can do here. So now if I, that's so weird. Now, now what do you see my desktop or do you see the? It looks like it's trying to close, uh, to minimize your desktop, but it's stuck or something. That's so weird. So unshare, go down to yeah, the stop. Stop, stop screen sharing and then screen share again and make sure you share your whole screen and not just your one window. Um, this is funny because this is a, what I'm getting when I click share is not something I've ever gotten for, before. So um, it doesn't, let's just, it, my choices are desktop or the PowerPoint. Okay, share the PowerPoint. It's in PowerPoint. Share the PowerPoint. Yeah, yeah that's funny. I've never had to do this before. There you, there you go. go. Okay, is that working now? Yeah. Yay. So mastering your message, how to convert networking opportunities into clients and cash. Okay, awesome. Now it's just not running my slideshow, but that's okay. We're gonna go with it, right? I was, I was telling Karen earlier, when I do this in, fr in front of live audiences, I don't even use my slides. So we're all good. So as long okay. as you guys can see, you can see the whole thing, that's fine. You can even ask me questions about the speaking part of, of this or how I do it or how I designed it or what the reasons were. Okay. Uh, so what we were talking about was it's the beginning of the year. Everybody starts with all these resolutions that by next week we'll be talking about why they aren't working. But for now, our goals are always either, you know, do more, make more, have more, be more, see more, whatever it is. And we put all these efforts into especially our business, right? Everybody's wanting to grow your business because if you're not growing your business, you're kind of really growing a hobby. And everybody's focus is always on, you know, how can I do more or make more or get more leads or clients? And the bottom line is you've got to speak more. And a lot of people say to me, well, I don't want to be a speaker. And you don't have to be a speaker, but you speak about what you do every single day. And if you're not speaking in a way that's clear and impactful, then think about me as a networking buddy, right? Maybe not your client, but I'm your networking buddy. If I don't understand what you do and can't remember it in a clear and easy way, I can't refer you to someone else. Okay, so really speaking and understanding your message is so important. It is the foundation for everything you do. And when I talk about messaging, I am not talking about your marketing message. Okay, I'm talking about this core piece of who you are that shows up in your business. It's the piece, and I don't know what everybody does, but I know what Chrissy does. So Chrissy, you're a VA. What sets you apart from other VAs? It's not that you can type faster or produce this, uh, a document faster. It's who you are. People are hiring you, not your product. Now, they might need your product, but they can get your product from a thousand people. And so part of what you want to learn to do and part of what I try to teach people is how does that come through in, your, in what, what you speak about? So when I talk about mastering your message, it's mastering that, that piece of who you are that drives what you do. And then how do you talk about that? What is it that shows in you and your personality and in who you are that makes me want to work with you versus someone else? When you can do this. When you get to this point that you can do this, you will completely ditch a pitch. I can't stand a memorized elevator pitch. And you will be so much more natural in talking about what you do and who you are and what you do shines through that people will actually hand you their business card and go, I need to work with you. You know, and I can tell you that is so much more fun than going out and making calls or setting up leads and doing all this other stuff. So it really, when you get clear on your messaging, it really will help you convert all these networking opportunities, whether they're online or in person. And remember, everyone you meet is a networking opportunity. And I do not mean a sales opportunity. I want to be very clear here. And especially for anybody watching the replay, I want to really stress this to my direct sales people, my network marketing people. It is a networking opportunity. That's a relationship opportunity. It doesn't mean pitching opportunity, right? But everyone, you know, if you're at a holiday party, if you're at a vision board party, right? And you're for the new year, I know lots of people are doing those. How is it you're talking about what you do and what your vision is that make people go, oh my gosh, that's awesome. Like, 
you know, I've talked to 10 people, but the way you say it sounds so cool or so much better, I want to be a part of it. So that's what we're going to look at today. And I like to go from the networking angle just because I think that's where everything starts because when you can talk about what you do with so much clarity, it's going to show up and everything else. If you're not clear on who you are in your business, then your traditional marketing message is going to be off. Your sales are going to be off. Your products, it doesn't matter what it is, it's going to be off. And the thing about networking is it's expensive. And we often don't look at the, the investment price for networking because we, we're paying $40 here and there, or we're paying $100 to be in this group, and $150 to be in this group, and they're kind of scattered. But if you had to write a lump sum check all at once for all of your networking at the beginning or the end of the year, you're going to write a check for typically, a, you know, you're going to think I'm crazy, but in, in all the people I've interviewed, it's typically around $1,500 plus. And you want to make sure you're getting that back. I would like to see you getting it back tenfold. But most people aren't. And most people don't realize that because they forget that they paid maybe last November for a membership that was $150 for the next year. But then they're paying to travel someplace or they're paying for lunches. And a lot of networking people will tell you, and it's true, when you go to luncheons, it's not about all the rubber chicken you're going to eat. It's really about the networking opportunities. But let's face it. I don't know about you guys, but if I eat one more piece of bad dried chicken or uh, mercy, they serve fish, which I've seen somebody try to serve a white fish at a networking opportunity and that was bad and smelly. You know, you just get kind of, kind of burned out on the networking thing and you're like, why am I even doing it? And so I want you to make money from doing it. If you're going to network, you know, I think part of it, sometimes we network because we're, a lot of us are solopreneurs and we want to make friends and that's great. Have your support system in place, but I want you to be getting clients or referrals. Okay. So it's building relationships to get referrals. And I want you to start thinking, how much have I invested in networking and what's my return? Am I getting a return? And if you're not, and I mean, if you are gangbusters, good for you. We want to hear how you did it. If you're not, I want you to really start thinking about where do you think your gap is? What's the challenge? And I'm going to go over kind of some of the challenges I see here. And um, Karen, you can feel free if you can for me to monitor the chat and just wave at me if somebody needs me to stop or if I freeze or somebody has a question. Um, so traditional messaging and my little button's not going to work. So let's see. Okay. Is, is like I said, it's an investment and I want you to get, um, make sure you're getting the return you want. And this is about getting you ready and clear, attracting clients. And I want you to be seen as the expert. I want you, I mean, I can't tell you ladies how many Rodan and Fields people I know. And I know a lot, right? There are two or three that stand out, right? What is it about them that stands out? It's how they show up. Is their message on Facebook the same as their message when I meet them in the person? Are they the same or are they changing? We want you to be the same. We want you to be really grounded in who you are. Uh, what I don't want you to be is boring. So the standard training is, you know, I work with, you know, Susie Q who struggles to do this. When they work with me, they make millions of dollars and they save their marriage. I'm totally making this up. But you know, you know what you've been trained to do, right? They're traditional. I work with people who, and here's the challenge, is if we're all trained in that, our brain hears what they say. So if, 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 I, if, if Karen is saying, you know, I work with entrepreneurs who, I, in my head, I start to fill it in for myself because I'm used to the saying. I work with entrepreneurs who struggle to present or speak, whatever. And I'm not really connecting with what Karen says, so I'm not really hearing her right? Because there's nothing about what she's saying that's going to stand out. It's what I hear every single day. And I'm going to give you a little sidebar here as we go forward. This is another reason I tell people no elevator pitch because you want to change up what you say for the same reason. If you say the same thing over and over again, yes, people kind of know it, but then they start to dismiss it. The brain says, I got this. I don't need to listen. And it checks out. Now, the other thing I see happen outside of kind of the boring moniker of, of who I am and what I do, and I want to stress there, I said I work with. I didn't say I help. I didn't say I support. I work with. I get paid for what I do. And that's something I see a lot of women um, have challenges with. But the other thing is they show up at, at events or online, and every time I see them, they're doing something different. And I'm thinking, she changed her business again? One month she's selling toothpaste. One month she's doing something with clothing. 
one month she's doing, I don't know what over here, but what I'm noticing is every time I see her, she's doing something different, right? And the challenge is she's probably, they're probably all related, but her messages are not related. So she shows up as being scattered and unsuccessful because we think she's switching from company to company to company every month when something doesn't work. So we want you to make sure that you do not do this and that you do not have multiple messaging personality disorder. And you watch your friends and you guys help each other out when you hear this, right? It is fine for this person who it turns out uh, was an image consultant. And these were factors of what she did. The problem is she didn't present them that way. She presented them as silos and individuals instead of as the umbrella of her company. Uh, I'll give you an example. My company is based on productivity and performance. I've been doing this now about, I'm in my 17th year, and I have built my business speaking on productivity, performance, meaning how do you work best? How do you create the environment, the mindset, everything's for you to be the most successful? And we really work with the individual and then, then the team members together so that everybody can have an environment that supports them. From there, the speaking side of my business launched because I work best through speaking and I grew my business 300% in about six months by getting get, tripled my client base uh, through speaking. And so that's so my message has to encompass all of that, right? So I talk about performance and productivity and how performance can be different things. But if I just showed up one day and talked about networking and I showed up another day and I talked about selling from the stage and I showed up another day and I talked about apps to make you more productive, you'd be going, I'm not quite sure who to refer to her because I'm not quite sure what she does. So is everybody with me? Okay, I see some head shaking. And so what I want you to do, the first step in this, and this is the step that's really going to take a little bit, it's going to take the longest. It's a good place if you've got pen and paper to write this down. When we talk about who you are and what you do in your business, it's about what I call your stake in the ground around what you do. It is that thing that you do not waver from. Okay. It is, and just for fun, it's not this kind of stake. It's, it's the stake. It's the, what are you putting in the ground? What's the line in the sand you will not cross for me when my business started, it, it's, it's that place of if your kids or somebody called you in the middle of the night, like, what are you known for saying? For me, it was like, well, did you do what you're supposed to do? Did you follow through? Did you finish what you started? It was also, it was always about, did you finish? Not like, like finish, like I want you overachiever. It's like, did you finish your commitment? Did you follow through? It was always, did you follow through? Did you do what you were supposed to do? And that's what I started speaking on in the beginning. I do a lot of talks on procrastination and discovering your dynamic DNA, which is your work style and how you work. And, and so that's kind of what I was known for. And if, you, and this, if you're not sure what yours is, ask your friends. You can ask your partner, significant other, and take that one with a grain of salt, but ask your friends, you know, because they'll tell you. And the minute they say, oh my gosh, you're great, you're perfect, say, really, I need you to be honest with me. Because one of the things I'm learning is that friends are sometimes the, the um, are hurting your business more than helping because they're not really being honest with you. I mean, I love it. I can be pretty direct. And so my friends will say, well, you can be assertive. And I'm like, I'm good with that word, right? Um, but know who you are in your business. And you're thinking, okay, well, how do I find that out? And we're going to go through some questions you can ask yourselves. You know, ask yourself, what do you stand for? What do you believe in? And if you're not sure, think about things, think about controversial things. Because people think, and especially women, this is one of the things I really want to encourage women to do is be able to take a stand and speak about what they believe in. And then, you know, maybe some other time I can teach you how to do that through speaking in your business because it's all related. But it's, um, you have an opinion on what's going on in the world right now. You have an opinion maybe on the government shutdown. And, you know, just for anybody watching this later, it's January, the government shut down right now. I'm not going one way or the other. I'm just saying you have an opinion. I want you to have that strong of an opinion in your business. You want to have lovers, and I hate to use the word haters, but haters, you do not want to be in the middle. The middle disappears. Think about it as a toddler. Positive attention rocks negative attention is better than no attention at all. And if I'm in the middle, I'm not seen. So what do I need to do to be seen? And a toddler's going to go one of those other two directions, right? You want to be noticed. It's totally okay to, to shake things up. I want you to shake things up. 
So what's something you always say? What, and then again, ask your friends, ask the people around you, oh my gosh, you're always do this. And you're like, really? And like, yeah. And the thing is you do it so much and it's such a part of who you are that you actually may not be aware of it. Okay. How would others describe you? What's your opinion on life or in your industry? You know, why did you get into what you're doing? One of the reasons I have really taken a hard, um, you know, my business was straight up productivity and now the speaking side's really taking off because quite frankly, there's not enough strong female speakers out there. And I really, you know, I watch all these movements going on and the bottom line is they need to learn how to speak to be heard and how to use their voice in a constructive way. And there's just so many directions I can go with that, right? There's so many things I'm seeing in the industry uh, and, and that's kind of part of what fuels my fire. And then what is it that sets you apart when you talk to people? And when you can pull all this together, this is it. Part of what sets me apart when I talk about speaking is that I kind of get specific. I use what's in the room when I talk about it. So if I'm at an, and that's what I mean about changing up your story, I always talk about how you work best because not all of my clients are speakers on the stage. Some of them are like, I just really need to know how to have a sales conversation. I get nervous when I speak to people, you know, and that's fine. It's whatever works for you. So what is it that sets you apart? And it's not just, you know, never let it be that you're cheaper. Um, don't commoditize your business, but make it about something different. Well, you know, a portion of, and I know several people do this and it's something I'm thinking about in the process. I just don't have that much knowledge on my nonprofit side yet, but is a portion of, uh, for me, I'll give you an example. At some point in time, a portion of all proceeds will go to, I'm rebranding to smart success, which is part of the process I teach. And a portion of proceeds will go to a nonprofit to support kids who learn differently in schools. Right. That's part of what's going to set me apart is so, so, so when people work with me, it's going to also go towards something else. Uh, it's also, you know, there's all these little things, but the bottom line is every time I speak my underlying core message, whether I'm talking about networking or a 30 second or a one minute, or I'm talking about how you work best, it all comes down to performance and productivity. They always tie together. So does this make a, now I wanted to, get this too. This, when I teach this in a workshop, some people get it in 30 minutes. Some people take three hours. Some people take three weeks to land on what this is, what their stake in the ground is. Okay. So if I'm making you think that I'm doing my job, this is not supposed to be, Oh, I've got this in two seconds. Right. And I want you to get that. It takes time. And when I work with people, we go through a whole process on how do you find this? What got you to do what you are doing now? What got you here? There is something. And if we were to look back kind of through your history, both in your values, your beliefs, the way you were raised and all your work experience, we're going to find what I call the golden thread. And that's the common piece of what you do and how you show up in the world. And then your experiences with that are what drives you to do what you do. Okay, so it, it's a process to find this out, but when you figure it out, I'm telling you, it makes everything else so much easier. Okay, and for the sake of time, I'm going to move on, but feel free to ask me any questions and we'll give you an opportunity where you can email me or tag me in the forum to ask me questions afterwards. Ooh, was that somebody dinging in? Okay, do you, should I just keep going or was that something? Okay, keep going. Okay, well, welcome whoever just joined us. Okay, so... The first thing we talked about, stake in the ground, right? You have to know who you are in your business, why you do what you do, and it is not just to make money. It is deeper than that. It is part of who you are, okay? I talked about mine being about performance and productivity. Underneath that is that I believe everybody was made perfect and to work just the way they are. Nobody's broken. Everybody learns and does things differently, and I'm going to help you perform and produce at your best, not at somebody else's best, but at your best, the way you work best. So that just gives you a little bit about me to go on to understand how to find yours. The second thing about networking and business is you've got to remember, it is never, ever about you. It is never about me when I speak. When you're talking to someone, it needs to be about them their business, their clients. How can you help them? If I'm talking to Karen, I want to listen for what she says. And even if I go first, I'm just going to maybe kind of go on my hunch or whatever I know about her and say, oh, well, you do this. You know, well, I work with 
you know, entrepreneurs who struggle to talk about what they do, who are, who want to claim expert status. And, you know, some of your people, and I might refer, right. That's business to business. I might be, a, I might be a benefit, maybe not to Karen, but to Karen's clients or to someone Karen knows. So instead of me talking about what I do, and I'm going to give you an example in just a minute, I want you to talk to people about what you do for them make it about them and here's what I see happened hi everyone I'm Cricket Harrison and I'm so excited to be here you know I have been doing this work well really it started when I got sick and I went through all this stuff but I'm okay now and I'm, I'm just so excited and I use this special product and it really helped me and I just can't tell you I just want to share it with the world Cricket Harrison come see me and you're like what what it's all about that person Yes, I'm having fun. We got to have fun. Um, the other thing I saw, and this was this was at a, a smaller networking event. We were sitting at this table, and this lady introduced herself, and she says, "Hi, I'm Cricket, and I'm a business coach, and and I've recently just retired from my job, and I have an MBA, and I have an ABC, and I have a DEFG, and I did this for 25 years, and I got my PMCPP, and I did this, and I did this, and her 30 seconds was up, and we went, huh? And it was alphabet soup." And the thing is, she's probably got tons of knowledge. Having just retired from whatever the heck it was, she probably has tons of knowledge and tons of ways she could help people. She probably ideally has one specific thing she does really well, but all she did was share her credentials with us. Now, I'm going to be really honest with you. That tells us she's nervous and she's not confident and she's not clear on what she's doing. Doesn't mean anything's wrong with her. I don't mean that any way, shape, or form. It just means she hadn't thought it through and she's not clear on her message. She doesn't know who she is in this new role yet. Do y'all understand that? Like she, she probably has tons of knowledge, but even now I still can't tell you what she really did because she was too focused on her and promoting herself and building herself up versus saying, um, this would work for you, you know, and it may not even be about her, but it might be something else. This would work for you. Um, be aware of being passionate. Okay. I'm not saying don't be passionate, but be passionate about what your work does for somebody else versus then yourself. Again, make it about the other person. I always think of the um, Jerry Maguire, show me the money, right? He kept saying, show me the money. He wanted, I forgot my name, he wanted Jerry, well, who was it? Cuba Gooding, whatever his name was, wanted, wanted Jerry to be passionate about him and working for him. And what am I going to do for you? Not about himself. Not look at how good I am. I'm a sports agent. I'm going to do this. I mean, he wanted him to be passionate about the other person. So passion in business is described as an uncontrollable emotion. I learned that from my mentor, Larry Wingett. So I want to give him full credit for that. But, you know, it really is. And there's this place where you want to be, you want to have passion about what you do. Um, it wants to show up in how you do it, not you talking about it. If you have to tell someone how passionate you are, and you're probably not that passionate. You're probably trying to make yourself believe you are. Your natural passion and desire and love of what you do is going to come out as you do it. Okay? So you don't have to go talk about it all the time. And I'm going to tell you a really kind of hard thing is most of the people who talk about how passionate they are when they're at a networking event are broke. And I know that's kind of the hard kind of thud landing, but it's true. Not everybody. Not everybody. But remember, make, when you're networking, when you're talking business, when you're talking about, about what you do, it's never about you. It's about the other person or their clients or what can happen. Another example I'll, I'll give you is I have a friend that's an artist. And one of the things we worked on for her was, uh, was instead of just trying to sell her art and kind of tell us why we needed art, it, she started saying, here's, here's the amazing custom art gifts I can help you send to your clients at the holidays or as a thank you every time you get a new client, we can do this for you. And all of a sudden she became this fantastic go-to service of look what I can send to my clients as a thank you that she makes for me. And it changed her whole way of doing business because it became about me and my clients or my business and helping me grow versus her kind of pushing her custom art, which is fabulous by the way, but, but you, you see the difference and it's how we respond to things, right? Okay, so we've got stake in the ground. We're remembering it's never about you. And the next piece is you know, equally important. State the problem you solve and show us how you have the solution. If you do not have a problem 
that we need, you just want to be chatting with someone and you know, it, it, it's a different situation. We, I, I talked to someone yesterday uh, and she was getting ready to speak at a networking event. And she's, she, she's hilarious. She's got this great talk. I love her. And she, I said, well, what's the problem you solve? And she went, well, see, that's just it. I'm still figuring that out. I'm like, well, we usually base our talks on the problem, not the other way around. So make sure, excuse me, people um, have a problem that, that you can solve. Most people do because you can talk about health, happiness, stress, any of those. I often look and see what's in the room if I'm in person with people and we'll either talk about why speaking helps you get expert status and helps grow your business, which is very true. But when I go around the room and we have 30 seconds to a minute and typically 50% of the room or more cannot say what they do in that time frame, guess what my next message is? I work with entrepreneurs just like yourselves who really have a great product but struggle to talk about it in 30 seconds to one minute. Boom, I've got the whole room right? Um, so I'm identifying the problem. And then when, when you identify the problem, somebody can go, oh yeah, that's me. I've got that. Right? Don't make us figure it out. If you make us figure it out, then we go into our head and we're really not paying attention to you. Now, along that lines, don't tell us the how. And you're thinking, what? I'm not going to tell you that I helped solve this because we're going to do this six week telecourse and we're going to do this and do this and do this. And I'm going to read your brain and I'm going to make you take an assessment and I'm going to, you know, you don't need the how, right? When you're meeting with someone, you'll get overwhelmed if they tell you all that stuff. You just want to know, can you solve my problem? And how does that help me? So if I, you know, let's say I'm a dentist, if I solve the problem of you grinding your teeth at night, how is that going to help you? It's going to save you tons of money in the long run. It's going to prevent headaches. Those are the benefits I'm buying. I'm not buying how you're going to fix my teeth. I'm buying the end result of my teeth. Does that make sense to everybody? So I want to give a few more examples in here because this is something I see a lot. Don't use tribal or group specific language. It needs to, or abbreviations, it needs to be something everybody can understand and not have to decipher. And again, if you start talking in terms that I don't understand, I go into my own head and I'm like, what did she say? What did that mean? I wonder if it was this. Or if you say, you know, I teach people to do X, Y, Z. And what that is, is if you have to explain what it is, you're not being clear. So don't say I teach people to do X, Y, Z, and what that is, is social media. I teach people how to do social media to increase their online presence. Be really straightforward. Make it easy for us to understand you, which in turn makes it easy for us to tell somebody else about what you do. Because remember, this is relationship building. It's not necessarily about selling to the person in front of you. That may happen. And just consider that the bonus on you know, icing on the cake. But I need to be clear enough that you can say, oh, you need to talk to Cricket. She helps people figure out their message when they're speaking to people. It needs to be that simple, not the stake in the ground. You don't have to go with my terms. Just, it's just I help people you know, speak more clearly or whatever that is. The other thing is be mindful of saying things like transformations. Um, don't get caught up if you do EFT tapping Akashic Records. I got nothing against them. Don't ever get me wrong. That's your how. Okay, that is your how. What you help people do is the problem you solve and the benefit they get. The how comes in the follow-up question. If you tell everybody everything up front, they go, oh, okay. You know, and you're kind of like, where do I go from here? But if they say, oh, well, I help people, you know, clear limiting beliefs, I'm, you know, whatever. And you go, oh, well, how do you do that? Oh, well, you know, I used to practice as a psychologist and now I do this. And it starts the conversation going right? Leave room for a conversation. Stay away from things that talk about the how, especially if you are doing a course. Because again, if I come up to you and say, oh, I help people with speaking and they say, how do you do? Well, you know, I have you sign up and you're going to do this six week course. And we're going to meet really intensely every week for six weeks. And you're going to do this, 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 and this. Your brain's like, I'm done. I'm out of here. It's overwhelm and intimidation to the brain. Even if it's not scary, it's this thing of, as too much at once, right? That's a follow-up conversation, right? Because the how really isn't what's important. It's the, what you're, it's that you're solving the problem and what the benefit to them is.
Okay, so how are we doing? We got, we're good on time here. Okay, so I wanna give you, I'm gonna play with you here. I'm gonna give you an example. And this really happened to me and you guys can chime in the chat and maybe I'll see if I can see it or if Karen can tell me. I was at a networking event and we're in kind of a little circle, you know, and, and somebody watched, walked, walked up to join our group. And, you know, we opened up the circle. Everybody was polite. We, whoever was speaking finished and we turned to her and we said, hello, you know, you know, we kind of introduced ourselves. We didn't go around the what I do, just, you know, hello. We gave her the chance. And she walks up and says, hi. And she says, I'm so-and-so. And she says, I'm a transformation catalyst. And she stood there and she smiled. And we smiled back. We kind of went, oh. And finally somebody goes, and what's that? And when we did that, and we, nobody was being mean, right? You could kind of see her sink. So what do you think she did? I want to hear from the group. What do you think she did? Type some stuff in and Karen, you can tell me. Um, I, I'm afraid to click anything because I don't want to mess up the screen at this point. I know, I know. Or, or if they can, they can speak, if there's not yeah. that many on here. So if they want to yeah, say something. Can just unmute. Everyone's muted so there wasn't any background noise, but you can just unmute yourself. I mean, the first thing I thought is she stumbled all over her words trying to find out what that meant. Somebody, she rambled for 10 minutes with more unintelligible gibberish that's from holly she had a long rambling incoherent explanation from courtney well just tell me what do you think a transformation catalyst is what do you think she did someone agent of change someone who helped you change change what diapers i mean <laughs> that's really good i mean that we gotta we gotta think about this guys anything We're so about you that you want to change anything and so would you pay someone a lot of money just to change anything about you that you want to change that has no spe no specialty Chrissy said maybe she's a weight loss or fitness help. You know, she helps with weight loss or fitness. Right. We, right. we don't know, right? I mean, yeah. could be anything. So, so, and this is what's so good about this. This was an honest experience. This truly happened at an event. And as we, as we kind of asked more questions, right? This is, she was using language. She was trying to be something. I don't know whether it was hip and cool. It's, it's like, to me, authentic is the new buzzword along with, you know, transformation, catalyst, change agent. Everybody changes. You change or you die. Everybody changes. Be really clear. Own what you do. Don't put it in this fancy bubble wrap paper where we can't really see it. So, so I'm going to tell you. I think she doesn't really know what she does. What is the you're going to tell us, right? What yeah, you're okay. That's so, it. so hold on to your hats here. She was a hairstylist. <laughs> oh my God. And her reference was, you know, you go in and you can get a cut and a color, you get a little highlight action here. You can kind of change and you can feel good. You can go from blonde or brunette to redhead and you can change what you do. The thing is, and the thing that kills me is I love me, my hairdresser. Mm -hmm. I do not know a woman that doesn't. And the minute she is out of love with him, she breaks up and moves on and finds somebody she does love, right? We're pretty particular about who we let mess with our hair. And what it, how she showed up, and I'm sure y'all can get this now, is not confident in what she did. Do you want to go to somebody to cut and color your hair who is not confident in what they do? Or is who is embarrassed about what they do? No, I would have loved it if she said, oh, I work at, so, you know, I'm so-and-so, I'm a hairstylist, I work at such and such a salon, my specialty is helping people do uh, hair that fits their face for photography and on stage, right? So, you know, cool, she's exactly what I need, right? Or something along those lines. She didn't own what she did, okay? You need to own what you do, no fancy language. And here's the funny thing about people. I can walk up and say almost anything to you guys as long as I come in in a happy, good, confident place. And even if it's something crazy, it's going to make you think. I can walk in and be kind of down and kind of shy and kind of, you know, uh, wimpy for lack of a better word, um, insecure. And it doesn't matter what I do. I could be a brilliant accountant that can help you save money. But if I'm like this, you're going to feel it and you are automatically going to be uncomfortable around me. It doesn't matter. You dictate how people respond to you. So be confident in what you do. Don't use fancy words. Again, am I going to refer a transformation catalyst? I can't. I don't know what she's going to do to them. You know, I said this in one group. <laughs> I can't. 
can't remember who it was, but they had little boys and the transfer, the transformers movie was out. And she's like, isn't it a car that does this? And I mean, we get all sorts of crazy things because now we're defining transformation catalysts based on what's going on in our own lives. Right. And that's therefore our expectations become about us. And we still have no clue what this woman did. So she's probably was very good. Right. But we didn't get an opportunity to experience that part of her. And again, you know, sadly, nobody's going to refer because she, she was so uncomfortable. She didn't seem confident. She didn't seem really like she knew what she was doing. And I'm sure she did. She was just trying to be something else or trying to use language that she thought was more enticing to the group. That is the importance of messaging. That is the importance of owning who you are and what you do and being, being who you are, again, that, that core place and, and getting your message out so that not only do people want to work with you, but they want to refer you. They understand what you do so easily, so clearly, and you do it so well in the way you speak about it that they can refer you more easily. Okay. Okay. I think that's all I've got for today. Wow. I flew through that pretty quick. Um, this is just a little bit more about where you can find me. I do a free Facebook group. You're welcome to join. Just go find it at right outside the box. And uh, there's a couple of questions just so that I know you're not robots and you know, we'll do questions here. You can ping me in the NACWI forum and I'm in there with Karen so I can answer questions. I'll answer a few questions here if you have them. And then I will, I told Karen, I will uh, convert these slides into a PDF and she'll be able to have them in the forum. So, and anybody listening to this later, again, please feel free to do this. Just, you know, put hashtag replay, listening to this class, have a question about this and I'll be happy to answer them. So y'all come in with questions or comments for Kristen uh, Cricket. I'm going to type in real quickly. I can't talk and figure out at the same time, right outside the box. I wanted to type in so they could just click on it. I really can spell. I just don't know how to type. There we go. So yeah. just click on it and go to her Facebook group if you want to. So any comments, y'all pop in. We can usually see you unmute yourself if you, Chrissy. Are you coming in to talk to her? I unmuted, but I don't, <laughs> I don't have a question <laughs> that I can think of. Um, I'm trying yeah, to, get the so, I, I took a bunch of notes. I always do in the chat room and then I use them later, you know, to promote and do a replay and things like that. And one of the things that stood out to me at the very beginning was because there's that intimidation. We all have these fears, right? And so you said, you don't have to be a speaker to speak your message. And it yeah. reminded me of the old saying, my PhD is in family therapy and here I am, Miss Entrepreneur USA, you know, mm -hmm. but um, in, in a communication courses, they would always say, you're never not communicating. Mm -hmm. You may be communicating poorly and you may be communicating well, but you are communicating. You know, even if you're, you'll say my spouse and I are not communicating. You just won't talk to me. Well, he just communicated a ton of stuff to you and his refusal to talk to you. And so I just thought, you're right, you know, you're never not sharing our message and who we are. And I'll give you a quick little example. And, it, and then we have a couple other people in the chat room, so let me get to them. But a quick example is the minute, and some of the people in this room know this, the minute that I bought NACWI, two things happened really soon after, two things happened. One was we were uh, faced with a um, legal battle over somebody trying to use cop NACWI copyrighted material without my permission. And so you can imagine just the, the sick to your stomach, the heartache of all yeah. going through all that. And it all worked out okay. The Lord preserved everyone's, you know, uh, stuff. But the other thing was my, the university I was working with said, you know, we want you to finish by this date. Instead of this date, it's this one. And then there was where all these little political things going on in the school and I was being copied on email messages that I should have never seen. And so there was all this upheaval. And so it caused me to not communicate to my tribe, my new tribe, and to not communicate um, and to communicate if I did with, there was just this fear. And so there's, you know, it just communicated this whole lack of confidence in 
NACWI, which really wasn't the case, but it was because of all these other things that I was going through. And so you're so right. When we're not communicating about what we do and we're not doing it, communicating well, no, you know, it's like you, you, your body posture said it all. When you said, if I, I may be a really great accountant, but if I'm not confident about what I'm doing, I don't have that passion. No one's going to hire me. It doesn't come across. And so, I mean, those are two things that just took me to another place, I think. So, so what groups with an S? So www.facebookgroups.brightoutsidethebox. Yep. Anybody else pop in and talk to her. We have how much, how many minutes do we have? What time is it? And we have, I have, it's two fifty four right. your time. So let me see if I can type better groups. There you go. You guys copy, copy, paste that for yourself and let's go check that. that so group. I can see this question. Carrie's asking, um, what's my number one tip to move that networking lead forward from combo or coffee into an actual paying client? Uh, is have that conversation and coffee and ask and listen. Listen for what their challenges are. Listen for what the problem is. Get a feel for how important that challenge is to them. And, you know, do they, and, and you have to ask guys, you have to make the offer and not everybody's going to say yes, but the more experience you get, eventually they will. And, and is it the right, is it the right one? This is one thing I think I mentioned this that I see in networking mar network marketing a lot. I can tell you this week alone, I've had several Facebook friend requests and I always kind of check like anybody does. Do we have people in common and all that? And, and no sooner than I have said yes, than I am getting pitched in Facebook messenger. There is no relationship built. They don't even know if I need their product. They don't even know if I already use their product. They don't know anything about me. Um, so you need to have that conversation. The one, one of the first things I learned a long time ago was be committed, but not attached. Be so committed to helping them and moving them forward, but not attached to the outcome, but provide the space and tell them, I, you know, I hear you. I can see how important this is to you. I know that, you know, that, that you want to have this or for me, you know, I know that it's important for you to be able to speak on stage and not shake and stutter. And I would really love to help you work with that, you know, help, help you do this. You know, would you like to work together? And let them ask for that. A lot of times, though, I will have the client. Um, I feel like I'm giving away all my secrets here. <laughs> I will let the client talk, and then usually I'll just be quiet, and then I'll get the. So how do I work with you? Mm -hmm. And I let them ask, so that they're they're. I'm not buying them in, pulling them in. They're they're buying in on their own. I'm not really selling. I'm offering a service. My service is out here. Should you choose? It's, it's kind of like, here's my sample platter. You know, if you're walking through the mall and they're like, do you want a sample? Here's my sample, sample what I have. And if you like what I have, you'll come order here, right? Um, mm. you know, Follow-up's important. A no is not a no until they tell you to get out of their lives. So just because they say no now doesn't mean it's not a no forever. The other thing is no is usually a sign of fear. So be willing to look and ask beyond the no is you know well what would what you know why it seems like you really want this i know this you know it seems like you know it's hard for you or thing what what would help you what would need to change for you to say yes mm -hmm. and then you start to find out is it really money is it really that they need to ask their spouse or a lot of times i find people who say i buy so many programs and i never do the work and that's my opportunity to say well that's what's different about me is i actually go watch you do the work you know <laughs> i'm one of the only speaking coaches i know who if you're in the area I go watch you speak or I make you send me videos. It's part of the thing. You don't get away with just doing it and reporting back, <laughs> you know? So that way I have people, they know they're going to get the support. Cause I think so many times people feel like they buy a product or a service and they get the how to, and they don't get the, in the moment I need help or, you know, I need more. And so it's, it's just figuring out what that fear is for them and helping them address that fear. Courtney, are you popping in? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my biggest takeaways and I, and correct me, um, one simplify, don't use buzzwords. Don't, you know, just simplify whatever your message is. Just be real clear and simple about it. And the other biggest one that I've heard you kind of say without saying is to listen. And as a former therapist, I think 
people don't realize how much people don't listen. And so when you listen to someone, that's what you said is that's when people start saying, well, how can I work with you? you? Just let people talk and you listen to them. And then people are asking you how to work with them. Hello. Uh oh, cricket. She I think froze. She, she froze. Did, oh, did I go? Oh, you're back. Go ahead. Okay. And, <laughs> um, can you hear me? I can now. Try it. This is crazy. Um, yeah. Yeah. The thing about listening is you have to listen because if not, you know, if I'm talking to someone and they're pretty solid with their message and they don't ever want to speak in front of a crowd or they're great with productivity or they do what I do, then that conversation is going to shift and change. It might be, how can we partner? Or it might be, well, what type of client is best for you? Because maybe you like clients that, that I'm not great with or so the, the conversation is going to change. You don't just automatically look at everybody's fresh meat, you know? Mm. So. Earlier, um, Holly said, it's sometimes so hard not to use fancy marketing speak. I can understand that if it's what we do more, more often than not, but you can see how important it is not to. Well, and that's why I differentiated knowing what your core message is, is not marketing. Your core message is not going to go on a t-shirt. It's not going to be a book title. It's, it's you on the inside that's going to show up in everything you do. My core message shows up on my personal Facebook page in my Facebook group. When I'm out with people, I'm this, that piece of me does not change. I don't have this philosophy here and this philosophy over here and this philosophy here. Okay. That's what we're going for is who you are and how that core piece of you shows up in your work. I love that you also said that it, you know, if there isn't passion behind it, it just won't go. But if I wrote down, if there is something like, if there is passion before it, it's going to automatically overflow. We, uh, in some of our coaching groups, we've actually seen a, a few of us change our direction where we were headed because we found that passion. We, we, we just, yeah. we rediscovered it. Oh, it's more about this than it is about where I was actually heading. And there's such freedom in that. Yeah. It did mean we had to kind of backtrack and do a little bit more work. There's so much freedom in that. So. Yeah. And we have to be mindful of passion with bright, shiny objects. We have a doing that part. It's um, was it Rick Tamlin in his big game? Says if you can do it alone, you're not living big enough. You know, I mean, you just it's you know whatever you're up to in the world is not something you can do alone. And so sometimes when when things get hard, people say, oh, I didn't really like it anyway. I go off to something else. So it's being <laughs> so you're starting to. Uh kind of come and go on us and how appropriate is this i'm just gonna if you don't mind cricket i'm just gonna close us in prayer and praise the lord that the whole core of the message um was clear there was no cutting out when we got started before before christy was here early with us and we were thinking oh no this is gonna work and now your voice is coming and going and that sort of thing so i'm i'm so grateful to the lord that it um that we got there so somebody, the, the link didn't work the way that I typed it in. So Carrie typed it in again. We will find you. We, it, we'll just look for bright outside the box and yeah. find you that way. Let me pray us out. Thank you, Cricket, so much for being here again. We may just make a habit of having you here every year. You could start the year out for us. It was great. I'm just trying to keep up with all of the thoughts I have. I did take some notes, some major note takers. <laughs> Father God, bless Chris, uh, Cricket for, I keep wanting to call you Kristen, Cricket for, you know, pouring into us during this hour, for reminding us to be passionate, that all of the, our message, our networking, and who we are has to line up with our passions, the passions that you've given us. Lord, help us to be clearer about what we do, um, help us to be clear within our own beings first so that when we share it with others, it comes across and help us to serve you well 
as we serve others. And we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. God bless everyone. Great to have Carrie. Haven't seen you in forever. Um, face to face anyway. And great to have Christy here first time. We expect to see you back again and again. God bless everyone. If you need to copy the chat room, you know, just click the little more button and save the chat. And um, we don't post the chat room in our with our replays, but if there's something within the chat room that you wanted, I'll make sure you get it. So, uh oh, somebody else coming in. Everybody's saying thank you very much. Thank you from everybody. God bless, and we'll see you next time.